Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. You might have uh, remembered my Atalon MP build, it was a three part series. So in that uh, build I used two Atalon MPs 2000 plus, so those were Palomino cores with uh, 256 kilobytes of cache. Now uh, I played online with my friends the other day, we played on Quake 4 which supports SMP. So, that was kind of nice to have the Atlon MP for that, but I did notice when there were a lot of players on the server that the frame rate, the minimum one, one, wasn't that nice. And we're hosting a LAN in August, uh, 5th to 7th, uh, in Halmstad, Sweden. So I figured an upgrade of CPUs would be nice. And talking of the LAN, if you would like to show up, if you have a computer that's suitable, it's 2002-2003 uh, era, so it's Pentium 4, Atlon XP, or Atlon MP if you have that. It's uh, ATI 9000 graphics card, it's uh, GeForce FX, it's the top of the line, we have set like what we wish people to have at, at the top. So you could take, if you have a computer suitable, you can show up, it's about uh, 20 euros or 20 US dollars or 200 Swedish kroner for uh, a ticket for a three day event. Uh, or you could just, if you're just interested, see what we're doing, you could drop by for free. So, like I said, it's in August 5th to 7th in Halmstad, Sweden. In, uh, it's a big degord, so it's like a public kind of place we're renting. Friends of mine. So, for that LAN, I would uh, like to have an upgrade, so I don't have a poor minimum frame rate, because I'm bringing this system as my main system. I do have another system, uh, the Atom XP1, uh, with the 2500 plus. Uh, a friend of mine is going to use that, and uh, I'm probably going to build a GeForce 4 system, uh, like mid-2002 also. So there might be a video on that, uh, hopefully soon. But back to these CPUs here. So. I went on to eBay um, like a month ago or something and I finally found some Bartons for sale. So I was under the impression that the 2800 plus MPs which are Bartons were the only Bartons. But uh, these were advertised as Bartons and uh, the uh, model code on these things uh, is uh, AMSN 2600DUT4C on both of these. And that's actually a 2 GHz Spartan, so slightly lower clock than the 2800 plus. So there are two types of 2600 pluses. There is a high clock one with half the cache. And uh, this is the lower clock one with double the cache, which is what uh, I want and most people want for their Atlon MP system. So there are different colors uh, here because they're not made in the same week. I think uh, one of them were made in 2003, week 52. And one was made in 2004, week 16, so that might explain the color difference. But they are model-wise identical, so it shouldn't matter, and we won't see them once they're under the heatsinks. So, yeah, the extra cash is what I'm hoping it will give a nice boost, because we are limited mostly on the uh, 760 platform by the memory bandwidth, so extra cash uh, won't hurt that. It should uh, hopefully give a few more percent performance. And uh, I'm not sure how much the extra clock will give on that platform, but we'll benchmark and find out what these things can do. So here we have the inside of the system. I can have a look at the whole system later if you haven't seen it before. But uh, here are our two CPU coolers. And if you see my previous video, you might uh, recognize the fans or not recognize them, I would say, because I've replaced them. Uh, I used fractal fans, so they had a white fan hub before. And uh, these are YS Tech fans, uh, 4500 up there, limited to 3500, because two of these things, like a Delta 60 at 6000 RPMs, if you run that, are quite noisy at 3500 already. Uh, the reason I replaced them is because, well, I don't like white. Plus, uh, YS Tech, these are the same basic design they used back in the day, in the 90s. So I have a friend with the original fans on this uh, Alpha Pell slot 1 cooler. Looks the same. They're also in pull, as you can see here. And uh, I have got comments both on YouTube and Discord and so on. People, people are annoyed by me running pull on these things. 
So when I replaced these fans, uh, I had to uh, basically I replaced the screws as you can maybe see here. I got some custom screws here, and uh, uh, the the reason for doing that is because uh, the old screws didn't go all the way through, so I had to get down here. And these new fans are solid all the way in the corners, so they wouldn't fit. And these screws are much easier to remove. I can quite easily uh, flip the fans in like five minutes and test. So I actually did run some tests just to confirm if my theory about the temperatures being right because I claimed that at worst these will run a couple of degrees hotter. Uh, best case probably about the same. And my argument for that is if hot air comes out of the fan its closest exit is here and the same is here. The air comes in from the front which is down here. It's like fan here, same type, oh, well not same type, but same size, 120 in the front, so air comes in here and if we run pull I do now, air can go in here, can obviously come in from the top same here, and it can go straight out here now if you run push, the air will have to come obviously over here down into the coolers, but then it has to come up here and here is the graphics card usually, I removed it because it's gonna be in the way when we replace the CPUs. So it's gonna hit the graphics card and that heats it up a lot so the card gets very hot. But also that air coming up here, the closest way in the lowest pressure zone is the fan if you run push, traditional push. So a lot of the air on this side coming up here will go into the cooler again. Also the air coming out of the sides down here, they want to go out over here obviously. But what's in the way? Well they've got a fan sucking down air here so that air and comes out of here and here we go out and go in here so I did run the test and the result surprised even me I put sensors in the heatsink space to measure them and the, the difference in temperature was 5 degrees cooler on the base of the heatsink with pull like I have now because otherwise it would have pushed if that was the case uh, and if you trust the motherboard, which you shouldn't really, because these CPUs on socket A have no internal sensor, you have a sensor in the socket on the PCB. They report 10 degrees cooler. Also, I did open air testing on an open bench with a similar heatsink with a CPU, a pension tree in that case, because it has a built in sensor. And if you run push in an open, open case, an open bench, so and you have some fan around so you can avoid getting the air coming out of the heatsink base here going back in again you got about a 3 to 4 degree drop with push now we have a 5 to 10 degrees drop with pull on the system so if you add out the 3 to 4 degrees on top of that we got an improvement somewhere around uh, somewhere around 8 to 14 degrees actually so there's a lot of recirculation happening if we run push, a lot of this air going out of the cooler going back in again because the lowest pressure zone is the CPU fan itself running push uh, pull we're doing right now fan will go up towards the camera, hit the side of the case and out and you can actually feel that back here if you run uh, like I do pull now uh, the back side here, the, 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 the fan here the upper half towards the camera which is the side of the case here got a lot of hot air coming out here you feel it at the back. We we'll run push this half of the fan upwards to the camera. It's basically cold, and that's because the air coming in from the front will just some of them go into the coolers, but a lot of it just go out here. And the power supply in the system, you can't see it, but it's a Corsair AX750, so that's a Seasonic X series rebranded, 80 plus gold, semi passive, and a variable speed fan. That thing goes from silent to noisy because. If you've got the fan up here, you can show it here. You've got the fan here. If air comes out here and here, what's the closest, lowest pressure zone? It's the, it's the PSU. So the PSU gets all the hot air basically. So it gets noisy and the computer just gets very warm inside. It's a horrible, horrible running push on this system. So if anyone don't like this pull configuration, I could obviously not prove it just by saying it, but uh, I could run the test, make a whole video about it. But uh, yeah, just because a heatsink comes with the fan in push configuration doesn't mean it's the best solution for your system. 
it might be the best for the heatsink for it to perform its best and that's just measurement between the intake air and how cold the base is versus the load so the heatsink in technically in this system in this configuration is performing worse but because it's get overall co colder air because we don't have as much hot air mixing in with the cold cooling air we got a lower cooling air temperature to use to extract the heat from the cooler and the CPU so that's uh, why I'm running push um, I mean pull because push kind of sucked so running suck or pull however you want to pronounce it so we're gonna remove these uh, CPU coolers I'm just gonna put a piece of uh, paper here just in case I have never slipped but you never know if it happens at least this smaller chance of damage to the PCB I think I said in the video these are never coming off again but uh, I was lying Oh. Tight fit. So yeah, that's also copper base on those. And here is the heat sinking fan. So the original fan is about half as thick, about 50 millimeters, this is 25. So yeah. Someone made a mess last time, apparently. This is a uh, build tema, but it's like CR seal to electronic spray. It uh, dissolves paste, so it's really nice, but also dissolves the pads glue uh, on these CPUs. So you have to be careful not to get too much there, or it might, it might get loose. But it's much easier to, to use than uh, isopropanol alcohol here. Um, paste saves a lot of time and makes a nicer job. You can obviously clean it off again with some alcohol at the end. I just want to clean it up so I don't have to deal with all of that later. So out with the old. And uh, let's mount the new CPUs here. We mismatch color CPUs. Oh, they, oh, no bent pins on that one. Never know with the eBay stuff. Didn't mention the price, and I probably shouldn't, but uh, they were cheaper than most things on eBay. Uh, consider were bought ones too. Uh, this, uh, that one piece on eBay seems to cost anywhere from 50 euros to 120, and uh, it's a stupid price. But, and it doesn't relate to the performance of the miner, it's just the same. Same or more for everything. So these were less than most. These were still relative to most. These were relatively affordable, and the shipping was good. Got them from Germany, so to Sweden, that's no tax and stuff. Well, well it's within EU, so it's like you pay tax in the country, in Germany in this case. Uh, other one than that, the shipping was pretty affordable and so on, so they weren't insanely expensive. Yeah. But they weren't free either. Uh, it wasn't for the land that I mentioned, I would probably not have done this. So, brand uh, and brand new tube of MX4, that will do more than well on this. Always a bit finicky. Let's see.
see if that makes my life a little bit easier here. CPU's in place, so we can uh, test the post it to see if it more still works. Should be. So let's power it up. So I think we have post here. Got two Atlas MPs, 2600s. We're in Windows, so the first thing I want to do obviously is check out the CPUs here in CPU C. And uh, Atom MP Barton 1.55 volts. Okay. 2600 plus uh, 2 gigahertz. Then the bus is obviously 266 as expected. And the cache is 512 kilobytes as we want. We should have a second one here. And it looks the same. So that seems to check out. So yeah. So figured we could do a little bit of Quake 3 testing here. Let's see here. Uh, downloads, games. Found a patch on the internet uh, a while ago. Been looking for a SMP patch for Quake 3, if anyone ever made one. There is SMP support in Quake 3, as most people know, but it's like it was never completed and it's kind of broken and on my system it's given negative scaling which is pretty common so I eventually found a website with dead links and managed to track down the files it pointed to which is this one SMP mini gear layer so there are three versions beta 1, 2 and 3 so this is basically a readme so I downloaded the website, I tracked down the files on archive.org eventually, using dead links. And these ones here. So basically what this patch does is actually implements proper SMP by splitting off the OpenGL rendering to its own thread. So this is supposed to work with like Voodoo 2s and stuff. And my friend has run it on his Pentium Pro, upgraded to Pentium to overdrives, 333s, with the uh, UFORS 4 I think, MX, and I uh, got like 90 FPS, so that patch, this patch works, and I tried it on this machine. So basically, you get a couple of files, uh, let's see here, so you have to read this if you want to figure out what to do, but it isn't that complicated for most people, if you have, if it's easier for people who not, that don't have two deficit cards. So uh, that's the wrong folder here, but we're going to one of these here. We got two files. So this one is basically like your uh, GL driver. It kind of hijacks, I think, the OPGL32 DLL or the Glide driver. So you have to uh, set that in here. It's by default for OpenGL32 here. But if you read, uh, if you read a website, read me, you can change this to work with Glide. So it should work with Voodoo 2 at the very least. And I tested it and it does engage the second CPU a lot harder than uh, what uh, the traditional SMP support in Quake 3 does. So you basically copy these files here and you put them in the game folder. Uh, that now is. So I've got Quake 3 over here. Uh, yeah. 
so I think they should be here. Where are they? Ah, they're in the root folder, so you got that one and that one. So I don't need to change anything because I got an 8090 and 800 Pro. So that's the first thing you actually do. Then you want to run Quake 3. And I figure we could uh, look at this to have something to show with the system. And then just to run the benchmark I did the first time. So what you have to do first is make sure SMP is actually off. So that's R underscore SMP, and this needs to be off. It's off, and then you can check your driver, GL driver. I think it this. Yeah, open it so. So this is basically how Quake 3 runs out of the box. So we can do a time demo with this. Oops, sorry. We're basically running on one CPU right now here. Very traditional. And we're gonna score 182. We can probably rerun it to make sure we get the highest possible score. One eighty two. So now we can enable the traditional SMP, which you shouldn't do if you want to install the patch, but I'm doing that to show the negative scaling here p1 and then you should just start the, the game but you can do vid restart should be enough that restart the opengl system um, the video system so we can basically down the demo again here And as you can see, we lost a few frames there. We're at 175, we were at 182 before. So if we now disable SMP again and do a bit restart in between here, and now we change the GL driver instead to R underscore GL driver empty GL, as opposed to sense of a multi thread G open GL 32, and then do a bit restart. Now we can check this. We can check that SMP is off. And we can check that the uh, GL driver is empty 32 yeah. Empty GL32. So now we can do the time demo again. Two hundred twenty. So that's a gain of thirty-five FPS there. And I could probably gain more if I lower the graphics detail a bit. I don't know uh, how limited by I am by the GPU here, running somewhat high settings. But it should have been an issue for a nine thousand eight hundred Pro. But you can quite easily make uh, Quake Three not not bound by the GPU if you really tweak it. But uh, I'm running these settings because they're more realistic. So this patch, uh, I figure I posted on uh, Dropbox and put it, uh, put it in the description below so you can try it out. Uh, it should work on anything that has support for two threads, so like a Pentium 4, though I don't have one with type thread in the test. But it should work with like anything like that, or it should work with like the old Celerons, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, slot ones. The old socket 370, pretty much anything with two CPUs, so at least two threads. So it's uh, much faster and a better, better SMP support for Quake 3. I put together a chart with some benchmarks here, so we can see the green lines is the Atom MP2000 Plus. I normalized that to 100%, so we can compare it easily to the Atom MP2600 Plus. So on the right you can see the percentage scaling in any given benchmark versus the 2000 plus CPU, the, the improvement. On the left I put uh, the score either in frames per second uh, or time in seconds or in, the, in points depending on the, the metrics used in the benchmark. So we can uh, look at Halo for example, got about a 13% improvement in performance. 
And if my math is right, uh, going from 1.67 GHz to 2 is about a 19% increase in clock speed. So that's the theoretical improvement in performance plus L2 cache, whatever that extra cache will do. So 13% isn't great, I would say. And then we got uh, Quake 3 with two cores and a patch. And we see about a 9% improvement, almost 10 here, um, uh, compared to the old ones. And we could be somewhat limited by GPU, maybe. But yeah, that's. Uh, and then we can see the Quake 3 2 cores uh, with the traditional SMP enabled, and uh, we see about a 12% improvement. But uh, remember that it's still worse than running just one core. So if we look at one core, that's about a 30% improvement. And then we've got Cinebench, which is about 91.3, so that scales pretty much linear with the clock. That goes for one and two cores. So we can see the points on the left there. So we went from 384 in Cinebench 2003 to 458 with two cores. And we've got Cinebench 2000. And we see the same pattern, about 90% improvement. Uh, Blender is about 16% with two cores and 8% uh, with one core. 3 d Mark 2000 is 17% improvement. Uh, 3 d Mark 2001 second edition is 10, almost 11% improvement. And then we've got 3 d Mark 2000 which saw 23% improvement. Though I remember I got up to 9100 on those CPUs, but I had to, I did re benchmark everything just to get a new baseline. And this could be due to background software or anything like that, so it's uh, relative. And uh, Doom 3 being the outliner here that got the most improvement of 27%, and that's single threaded game. So with a 19% increase in clock, we got a 27% increase in performance, 127% total here. Uh, so I've seen benchmark on Bartons on uh, like the 2500 plus on 333 bus, and uh, they measured up to some percent improvement due to the cache. Uh, but I do expect the cache to make more of a difference when you're limited with that 266 bus and shared memory at that speed too between them. So the extra L2 cache here is probably what makes up for those at least 8%, if maybe not more, that uh, above the 19 increase in clock frequency. So Doom 3 uh, do like the Bartons, it seems. Uh, Quake 4, uh, not that, that much of an improvement that I would like. It's 13.5 with SMP and about 18 with uh, single core. But uh, it's still an improvement. So that's our Atom MP upgraded from Palominos to Bartons. And uh, yeah, if it was worth it, I leave that up to you. You have the benchmarks. And uh, me personally, I think it was probably too expensive. But yeah, that's uh, eBay prices, I suppose, we live with. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.